NFL Week 13. We got the game of the week here. Niners, Eagles. A lot to break down in this game, so let's get right into it. This is a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. A game that the Niners fans and even some of the players don't really think they lost. They continue to use the excuse of not having a quarterback, but in the NFL, it's survival of the fittest and only the strong survive. This game on Sunday could very likely be a preview to this year's upcoming NFC Championship game. San Fran is currently listed as road favorites of a field goal. But if you look at this look-ahead line, which is an available betting line some sportsbooks offer a week in advance, they had Philly minus one and a half. Then both San Fran and Philly won their games this past week, and then the line opened San Fran minus two and gets bet up to minus three. What changed from before last game to after last game to warrant such an adjustment like this? Uh, And I'm sure Philly fans are probably wondering, how can the Eagles even be underdogs? They have the best record in the league, and the simplest way to put this is win-loss record means very little when you're setting lines, and this is where the difference between rankings and ratings come in. Rankings are really just an opinion. Philly would probably be ranked number one by most people because they have the best record at 10-1, and one. but ratings is how you measure a team's true strength based on combining several different advanced stats, and depending on who's doing the ratings, they can decide to use whatever metrics they want or what they think are important when measuring a team's success. The more metrics, more advanced stats used, the more accurate your ratings will be. This removes opinion completely, and it lets the numbers tell the story. But for the most part, anyone that's creating their own power ratings usually ends up with similar ratings for each team because everyone uses the same stats. There's no secret stats or anything. Everyone knows about the best stats to measure a team. DVOA, EPA, success rate, those are three very common advanced stats that I'm sure everyone includes in their power ratings. So based on my ratings, I have San Fran 8.5 points better than a league average team. I have Philly 5.5 points better than a league average team, league average being 0. This would make San Fran minus 3 or 3 points better than Philly if the game was played on a neutral field, but it's not. It's being played in Philly, so we have to adjust for home field, which is around 1 point. So now that makes San Fran minus 2. The sportsbooks have the line at 3, so I do show line value here on Philly at plus 3. And I'm a little surprised to not see more Philly money come in at plus 3 and move this line down to 2.5. But I also think the current line of San Fran minus 3 is factoring in some situational factors that all benefit San Fran. The Eagles at halftime have trailed in each of their last four games. um, And they've rallied to come back and win them all. The problem in this spot here is... They have a really tough opponent with San Fran who has playoff revenge on their mind. And the Eagles defense last week versus Buffalo was on the field for 92 plays. And then versus KC, their defense was on the field for 70 plays. That's over 160 defensive snaps played in a six-day span for Philly. Philly's at a big rest disadvantage here. And this helps explain the spread a bit more. Situationally, it's just a tough spot for Philly. Some good news for Philly is that all pro tackle Lane Johnson was a full go at practice on Friday. They'll need him. Uh, San Fran has had 15 sacks in their last three games. On the other side, it looks like Eagles defensive tackle Fletcher Cox will miss, which is pretty big because Purdy against pressure up the middle looks a lot different. Now the over has gotten sharp action. The total opened around 46 and is now up to 48 which is no surprise when you think about the weaknesses for both defenses. It's the secondary and how often teams pass against each defense. I think both teams will be able to pass on each other. The Eagles are tied for second with the Bears for most TD passes allowed. I'm definitely looking at Purdy over one and a half touchdowns. Also have Debo and Brandon Ayuk over receiving yards circled, but Picking who will win this game is tough. When I start to think Niners, I think about Hurts being 26-2, last 28 regular season starts. The guy's a winner. Um, And if this game's going to be close like it's expected to be, I'd want the Philly kicker, Jake Elliott. He might have made the most impressive field goal kick I've ever seen last week, 58-yarder in the rain. He's never missed a game-tying or game-winning field goal in the final two minutes of regulation or OT. That's the guy you want on your side in a close game, but... I'm going to side with Philly here. 
Uh, and I'm going to stop here. Uh, this one was a little bit longer, but the game of the week deserves a longer video. Until next time, good luck with your bets.